The irony of today's case is that it involves massive cell phone thefts, a string of armed robberies at Radio Shacks in Michigan and Ohio. The robbers entered the stores, guns drawn, herded patrons to the back, loaded up laundry bags with new smartphones, and then later sold their booty for tens of thousands of dollars per haul. In April of 2011, police arrested four men, one of whom confessed that he and a shifting group of 15 others had robbed nine different stores over the previous year. The suspect identified Timothy Carpenter as one of the ringleaders. The thieves all pleaded guilty, except for Carpenter and his half-brother. At their trial, the icing on the prosecution case was the cell phone location information recorded by Carpenter's wireless provider for each of the calls he placed or received on the dates of the robberies. Now remember, this was seven years ago and several smartphone generations. The information used at Carpenter's trial was not exactly precise. It did not report where he was when he texted or where he was when his phone was not in use. But when he made or received calls, the cell phone towers nearby recorded his general location with an accuracy range of about a half mile to two miles. And guess what? Those calls matched up rather nicely with the vicinity of the robberies. While there was eyewitness and video evidence against Carpenter too, his lawyer said the painfully irrefutable evidence was the cell phone data. It's the kind of evidence that in the end is the most difficult to argue to a jury that they shouldn't credit because the records are what they are. The question before the Supreme Court is whether the cops should have gotten a search warrant in order to obtain the cell location information. That would have required them to show a judge that they had probable cause to believe those records contained evidence of a crime. What they did instead was obtain a court order under the Federal Stored Communications Act, which is easier. In this case, as in others, prosecutors argue that the Supreme Court has long viewed information shared by a consumer as fair game without a warrant. Even before the stored records law was enacted, the High Court ruled that you lose your Fourth Amendment right to privacy when you share information with a third party, like the phone company. Fourth Amendment scholar Oren Kerr contends that the idea of tracking someone's movements in public is not new. The police, for instance, tail a suspect or check on his alibi only when they search the suspect's home or person do they have to get a court-approved warrant. As to the general cell location data at issue in this case, he maintains... These records are basically the network equivalent of public observation that traditionally would not be protected. After all, he notes, the cell site location information is not maintained by government decree. Rather, wireless providers keep the data recorded by cell towers in order to monitor and improve their service. Tracking a smartphone gets more and more precise by the day, in some cases allowing law enforcement to pinpoint the building or the office a suspect is in, cell phone site records, or automatic license plate reader records, or video from public surveillance cameras. The Supreme Court has, in recent years, laid down some new rules for the digital age. If the police use a GPS tracking device to monitor a person's life over a long term, they do need a search warrant. And if they seize a smartphone at the time of an arrest, in order to view its contents, they need a warrant for that too. So today's case is just the latest battle in what promises to be a long technological and legal war.